Greetings and good day to all. We are Team Experimental from University Technology Petronas, and we will be presenting on the topic of greenifying the petrochemical industry. Before diving into our topic, here's a short introduction of our team members. Fai Yi Chen, Jimmy Hua Zhe King, Grayson Pan Qi Hao, Xim Hui Bin, and Su Wen Wei. Before proceeding to the simulations and analysis, it is important to understand the background context around steam cracking and why it is so important. Steam cracking of hydrocarbons is one of the most important processes in the petrochemical industry, as it can produce valuable olefins such as ethylene, propylene, and butadiene from lower value feedstocks, such as in this case, NAFTA. The majority of the worldwide production of petrochemicals, such as the aforementioned olefins, originates from the steam cracking process. Due to the high temperatures and pressures required for the cracking reaction, a significant amount of energy is required to produce the products. In 2018, 180 million metric tons and 120 million metric tons of ethylene and propylene were produced, respectively. Due to this, there is a great potential for investment and innovation in the ethylene market as global demands are still growing, and the ethylene and propylene market is forecasted to reach a valuation of 583,820.7 million US dollars by 2030. A steam cracking plant commonly contains four main sections. Cracking furnace section, the PLE and water quench sections, the multi stage compression of the product gas, and product refining section. For our case study, we will only simulate the first two sections. Let's have an overview to our project. We will first go through the conventional steam cracking process, then the hydrogen based cracking process, then the electricity based cracking process, and finally the technical, economical, environmental assessment and comparison. The simulation of steam cracking process was done in SLB symmetry process software platform and some assumptions were made in the simulation. Next, since the steam breaking process is a complete process, some simulations were made in the simulation. First, a hypothetical piona stream was made using symmetry piona state calculator. Next, using oil source plot from symmetry by specifying HC ratio, the piona distribution and the distillation curve, the regress fit characteristic were found as below. Then, a balance of heat unit or a balancer is used to simulate the radiant section of the cracker furnace. Here are the regress alpha fit composition and the crack gas composition. The crack gas composition are adapted from a journal by Marcos Jogo. Now, let's go through our simulation. The PFD shown here is our base case, which is defined as steam cracking using conventional fossil fuel combustion as the source of energy. The other green alternative cases are also simulated using the same process flow, with the only difference being at the inlet of the fuel source. In this case, the fuel selected was natural gas. It is burned using fired furnaces and we assume 100% efficiency to simplify the model. These furnaces will be used to supply heat for fracking unit along with minor processes like superheating the steam and the pump. Moving on, the first step of this process is the preheating of the naphtha heat. This highlighted zone is also known as, known as the convection section. First, the feed is preheated to 278.1 degrees Celsius. Then, it is mixed with dilution steam and heated to 450 degrees. And lastly, it is heated to 800 degrees and 3 bar, which is the desired operating temperature of the cracking process. The preheating of feed utilizes the residual heat from cracking unit, and they are represented with energy streams extended from the cracking unit, as seen from the PFD. Then, room temperature water is preheated using the hot cracked gas, and it becomes a high pressure dilution steam and it also helps to cool down the crack gas before quenching as well. The next unit involves the main cracking process, also known as the radiant section. The cracking unit is simulated using a balancer that can convert reactants into specified products, and it also tells us how much energy the process will take via the principles of mass and energy balances. Then, 10,800 kg per hour of dilution steam is mixed with the feed to control reaction temperature and also to reduce coking. The cracked gas is then sent to transfer line exchanges, also known as TLE, to be cooled to stop any unwanted cracking reaction from occurring. Moving on to the quenching section, the quenching tower is represented using a two-phase separator or a flash drum in which both the top and bottom product streams will live in the same temperature and pressure. This will help to chill the cracked gas to a lower temperature. Then, the water used in quenching is recovered. The cooler as shown in the PFD is used to cool the quenched product to 30 degrees and 1 atmosphere. This is so that the water can be separated from the product stream for an easier refining of light olefins later on. 
the energy recovered from the cooling process will also be used for separation in the subsequent processes. This recovered water are then combined and pumped to TLE number 2. This stream of water acts as a cooling medium for trapped gas at the transfer line exchanges and the water itself will be heated and turned into superheated steam to be used for the adjacent process as required in the problem statement. From this base case, the source of fuel is natural gas with the composition extracted from external references. The cost and carbon dioxide emission of this process can then be obtained from the simulation results. First, from our simulation, the amount of natural gas required to achieve the energy requirement is around 810 meter cube per hour. By applying a conversion factor, the meter cube unit can then be converted into kilowatt hour. The total cost for this natural gas can then be calculated on a per year basis and is found to be close to around 10 ringgit, ringgit per year. On the other hand, this process also produces over 7 ton per hour of carbon dioxide from the natural gas combustion. All in all, is the conventional steam cracking using fossil fuel sources still the best? Let us find out in the next cases. The first alternative for conventional hydrocarbon fuels that we will explore is using hydrogen as a fuel gas for the cracker furnace. Hydrogen has a significant potential to enable a transition to a clean, low-carbon future, and this includes the petrochemical industry as well. By 2050, it is estimated that the hydrogen demand will be around 300% higher than it is today. The predominant method of producing hydrogen is steam methane reforming, an endothermic process in which hydrogen is produced from methane and steam. Approximately 50% of all global hydrogen demand is produced by the SMR process. The second method of generating hydrogen is through electrolysis. This is done by splitting water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas via an electrolyzer. Currently, SMR is the cheapest hydrogen production option and has the lowest carbon dioxide emission compared to the other fossil fuel best hydrogen production option. The reaction involves are um, steam methane reforming and water gas shift. These are the kinetic data and catalyst employed in our simulation of SMR. This is the overall process flow diagram that includes the SMR section. The natural gas was used as the fuel to preheat the stream to the desired temperature by assuming 100% combustion efficiency and the plug reactor will assume to operate adiabatically where the first PSR is used for SMR and the second is used for WGS. The feed stream for the reaction is natural gas and excess water with the ratio of 1 to 5 and a heat exchanger is used to cool the product stream. A separator is used to separate hydrogen gas and water. As a result, 922.832 meter cube per hour natural gas is required for the process. Before we move to green hydrogen, let's talk about the source of electricity. Generally, the source of electricity can be classified into renewable and non-renewable energies. From our analysis, solar power and hydropower are two of the most visible sources of electricity for this plant. Following that, the second option of generating hydrogen, which is electrolysis, is a zero-carbon method of splitting water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas by an electrolyzer by utilizing renewable sources of energy to power the electrolyzer. Subsequently, the combustion, of, combustion and oxidation of hydrogen gas only produces water, making the whole process emission-free. At present, the most mature electrolyzer technology is alkaline electrolysis, with a conversion efficiency of around 70%. Thus, when comparing between SMR and green hydrogen, the technical cost per kg is around 10 times higher for green hydrogen. With recent advancements such as higher efficiency electrolyzers, the cost of green hydrogen is expected to drop greatly from around $2.5 to $4.5 per kilogram of green hydrogen now to around $0.7 to $1.6 per kg by 2050. This makes green hydrogen a feasible option as a fuel gas in the coming decades. Electrical heating furnaces can be applied to steam cracking to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases, especially carbon dioxide. Electrified steam cracking can be a solution to the carbon dioxide problem and electrification of heat produced by green electricity is regarded as a pathway to a decarbonized industry. For our simulations, a total energy amount of 6,916,046 watt is required. By comparing grid electricity and solar energy as the source of electricity to heat the furnace, the long-term cost for solar energy is 72% lower than grid electricity for a year. According to a recent report by the International Renewable Energy Agency, entitled Renewable Power Generation Costs, hydroelectricity remains the lowest cost source of electricity worldwide, which is at 0.05 US dollar per kilowatt hour. 
To match the energy requirement, the total cost needed is 16,169,228.50 US dollar per year. By comparing these three types of cracking, conventional cracking, hydrogen-based cracking, and electricity Base cracking, we have a very high energy efficiency which is at the range of 90 to 100 percent. For the equipment requirement, the conventional cracking requires extremely high temperature in the furnace. SMR also needs to have high temperature and energy for hydrogen production from methane combustion. Electrolysis needs an electrolyzer with high amount of electricity and water demands, while for electricity-based cracking, it's better to utilize renewable energy for an electrically heated furnace. Obviously, conventional cracking will cause high greenhouse emissions. Also, a conventionally fired furnace can typically use only 40 to 45 percent of the fire duty in the cracking coils, unlike electrical power is fully utilized in the cracking coils without heat loss. For potential operation challenges of SMR, it may have undesired side reactions and catalyst the activations. For electrolysis, the electricity consumed by electrolysis can have a higher carbon dioxide footprint than the conventional cracker if fossil fuel is used. Lastly, for electrified steam cracker, the cost of renewable energy was two and three times more than fuel based electricity. Operation cost of electrified steam cracking is higher than conventional steam cracking. In our economic analysis comparing different methods, SMR emerged as the most cost-effective option when considering both CAPEX and OPEX. It boasts the lowest total cost due to its lower energy requirements and established technologies. From our simulation and literature review, the calculated cost of hydrogen fuel from SMR is around 10 times the calculated cost of hydrogen obtained via electrolysis. Meanwhile, the high cost associated with electrolysis can be attributed to its energy-intensive nature. The process demands a significant amount of electricity to produce hydrogen to water splitting, leading to elevated operational expenses. On the other hand, electricity-based cracking using grid energy becomes the highest cost option in both literature as well as calculated values. In our environmental impact assessment, the base case ethylene production method stands out as a significant contributor to adverse environmental impacts, including greenhouse gas emission, acidification, and ecotoxicity. On the other hand, from our simulation, SMR has significant higher CO2 emission than base case. However, it shows promise in reducing CO2 emission with potential reductions from 8.5 to 8.3 kg CO2 per kg H2. Electrolysis demonstrates even more significant environmental impact reductions, ranging between 21-34%. to However, it is essential to note that this method heavily relies on a stable supply of clean water, which can present challenges in region facing water scarcity. Interestingly, electricity-based cracking emerged as the most environmentally favorable option. It boasts the potential to reduce scope 1 and scope 2 CO2 emission to nearly zero. This method showcases substantial environmental benefits. In assessing the sustainability of different plant designs for ethylene production, let's explore the key strategies for each method. For SMR, we can enhance sustainability by adding a separation unit to remove CO2 and obtain blue hydrogen. Additionally, we can utilize excess heat from SMR to drive carbon capture, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. In the case of electrolysis, sustainability can be achieved by developing efficient and safe methods for hydrogen storage and transportation to ensure a continuous and reliable supply. As for electrified steam cracker, sustainability can be improved by enhancing selectivity through catalyst usage, lowering specific costs. Moreover, adopting advanced energy storage solutions such as battery system will ensure a stable and continuous power supply from renewable sources. In conclusion, for the environmental aspect, both green hydrogen and electrified steam crackers produce nearly zero direct CO2 emission. While for the economical aspect, steam methane reforming remains the better option because it is more mature and currently requires less development costs compared to electrolysis and electrically heated furnaces. Although SMR is currently better in terms of economical feasibility, stakeholders should look forward towards future business prospects and invest funds into development of electrolysis and electrically heated furnaces. With more development, their costs can be brought down and they can be more efficient and cleaner option in the future. There can be no sustainable development without sustainable energy development. 
We would like to thank everyone for listening to our presentation, and we wish you all a good day ahead.